Hello everyone, I am here with a countdown about one of my favorite video games on the Wii U. Today I will talk about my top 16 favorites for Mario Kart 8's Nitro Grand Prix tracks. This list was extremely hard to make because all of the tracks had beautiful 1080p graphics. Except for number 16. Also please remember that this is my opinion and my opinion only and I am rating these tracks by its design, details, difficulty, and music. Because this top 16 is focused on the Nitro tracks, Retro and DLC tracks will not be in this countdown. So without further ado, let's get on this list. This track, <laughs> oh my god, where do I even begin with Dolphin Shoals? I thought Nintendo was going to improve water tracks in Mario Kart 8, but I was wrong. It's a whole lot worse. First off, all of the CPUs are given the hardest difficulty, so if you drop a rink, you'll stay there for a long time because the CPUs are like Moving on, the pipe section is a bit unforgiving because if you get hit by something or lose speed, then you fall down the forever abyss. The Unagi Eel is kind of cool, I guess, because you can land tricks off of the back, but that isn't really dolphin related. Then after all of that, you go above the water surface and there is a gigantic whirlpool. That wasn't really necessary. The final turn is a death turn as well, because I mostly end up in the off-road or crash into the rock. The music is a bit obnoxious because I'm tired of hearing the very loud and jazzy saxophone. Dolphin Shoals is also pretty bland and boring. This track is very disappointing and it deserves the number 16 spot on my list. This track is possibly the worst desert track of all time, right beside Desert Hills. Bone Dry Dunes is just so plain and boring in my opinion. First off, the track design is twisty, so there are a whole bunch of turns on the track. Secondly, this track is just so boring. Where's the pizzazz? I mean just look at this track. What's the theme here? Sand? It's boring. <laughs> Thirdly. There is a cave and at the entrance, you drive through a rock shaped like Dry Bowser's head. This insulted many Mario Kart Wii fans, but that was before DLC Pack 2 was released. Oh yeah, and there are dry bones on this track and that was also insulting. Bone Dry Dunes also has some references to Mario Kart 7's Shy Guy Bazaar, because there are little tents with carpets at the finish line. The music is also what you would expect from a desert track. This track is overall pretty lame, and it deserves the number 15 spot on my list. When I first saw the name Water Park when I first played this game, I was like, cool, a water park track. But then I realized that it was pretty lame. Water Park is a pretty boring track in my opinion because it's not really exciting. Sure, there's a huge loop halfway through the track, but that's the only exciting thing. If you look at the background, you can see attractions like a Ferris wheel and a roller coaster. But the part of the track we're racing on is a museum and a submarine coaster. That's pretty boring if you ask me. Also, the music sounds very tropical. Piranha Plant Slide from Mario Kart 7 is more of a water park than water park. Overall, this track is a bit boring.
This track is a, yet another, mediocre track. Shy Guy Falls is, like I said, mediocre most of the time. This track has some good details, like the mud down the road and the waterfalls. Those look really good in graphics. But after racing on this track multiple times, the shine on the details starts to wear off a bit, and it starts to get a bit bland and boring most of the time. There are even Shy Guys mining in the background towards the end of the track. Why do you put all of these poor little guys into slavery? Moving on, the music sounds good because it sounds like it's from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And that's a really good movie. Anyways, all in all, this track is still mediocre after a year of playing on it. Now we're out of the bad tracks and into the good tracks. And like I said before, Mario Kart 8 had some amazing new tracks, so it was really hard to place them on this list. Mario Kart Stadium is one of those tracks, and out of the 12 I had to place, this one had to be last because it had less details than the other 11 tracks. Moving on, Mario Kart Stadium is popping out with some detail. Normally, the first track in the Mario Kart games is pretty boring, and they end up being near or on last on my list. But take a look at what we have here in Mario Kart 8. Nintendo really wanted to start your engines on a track filled with detail. Even though the track is really short, plain, and modern, you can't argue with some of the details. The music is even great and orchestrated too. This track is pretty okay in my opinion, and it deserves the number 12 spot on my list. Inspired by N64 Chaco Mountain, Sweet Sweet Canyon is a blast because just try to take this all in. You're racing in a land filled with lots of candies and treats. So awesome! This is exactly like Sugar Rush from Wreck-It Ralph, and that was a superb movie. Anyways, you start off by getting shot out of a cannon and into a canyon with a giant cake that looks like a castle. Cool touch. After that, you get to choose between two paths, a blue and pink one that both use a new anti-gravity feature. Then you get a few turns back to the finish line, and during those few turns, there's even a shortcut where you go through a donut. That is awesome as well, and it lives to the Sweet Sweet Canyon name. The crowd at the beginning is even made out of a great treat, gingerbread. The music really fits into this track as well. Sweet Sweet Canyon is overall a pretty great track. There are many iterations of horror-themed tracks in the Mario Kart series, like Ghost Valley, Banshee Boardwalk, Boo Lake, all of that. But Twisted Mansion takes the cake at being the best one. Before you start the race, the mansion's doors creak open in a horrific way, possibly scaring the player. After entering the mansion, there are two paths that wave up and down right next to a dining table. That's really awesome, I must admit. After that, you go underwater through a hole in the mansion that looks like a monster's mouth. Cool. Then there is another split in the road. Jeez, Nintendo likes to put splits in the roads, huh? Then you glide, then booze, then murderous statues, and then, and then, and then... My god, this track contains a lot of details, I like it! But it's not the best one. There are nine tracks better. The music even fits with the track perfectly. All in all, Twisted Mansion is a pretty good track.
When I first played this game and saw Toad Harbor, I thought it would be a pretty boring track. But after playing on it for over a year, it was actually pretty good. This track has so much detail packed into it. The 1080p graphics really mix well into this track, and it all is just, just amazing. The track is a little bit on the easy side, but the track itself just takes my mind off the easiness. The music sounds very great, as well as it sounds very tropical, just like Water Park. Overall, Toad Harbor is a really good track. Swamp Ruins really lives up to its name because it has swamps and the track takes place in Temple Ruins. Who knew it would make for a great track concept? Anyways, the track is pretty darn amazing itself because halfway through the track, there are many paths to take. It can go on the wall, in the water, or glide through the whole thing. But you have to wait for the stone wheel to tip over some columns to gain access to the gliding ramp. Uh, okay. Anyways, the end of the track is in anti-gravity, and there is another gliding section to the finish. This is much similar to Rock Rock Mountain's gliding section. The music also fits in so much and perfectly. Thwomp Ruins is an excellent track all in all. Wait, what? We're racing inside an airport? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Sunshine Airport is so fantastic because you are racing inside and around an airport. This is really amazing and it kind of reminds me of the airstrip from Super Mario Sunshine. And this can't be Sunshine Airport if there aren't any planes. You drive under and through planes on this track and on the gliding sections, you glide right by planes that have taken off. I really enjoyed the music as well because it has that airport feel to it. Overall, this track is great because of its graphics and it deserves the number 7 spot on my list. This version of Mario Circuits might be the best one out of the entire series. You want to know why? The track design. The track design of Mario Circuit in Mario Kart 8 this time is a Mobius strip. And it takes full advantage of the anti-gravity mechanic. And it really does make for a great track because it's shaped like an 8, so it lives up to Mario Kart 8's name. The details on this track are also amazing. There's Peach's castle, piranha plants, stacked Goombas, and the neat little buildings at the start and finish line and in the background. The music is really nice as well. It sounds just like Mario Kart Stadium's music, but with more of a guitar and saxophone to it. Mario Circuit is overall a blast to play on and it deserves the number 6 spot on my list, but there are 5 tracks yet to be better. Bowser's Castle on Mario Kart 8 looks totally amazing, but I honestly find Mario Kart 7's Bowser's Castle to be better. But other than that, Bowser's Castle is one of the best iconic Mario Kart tracks yet. On this version, the titanic metallic castle stares right down at you as it opens its gates. Later on, you go through a forked road and there's a huge rock shaped like Bowser punching the roads and making them wave like the thwomps on SNES Rainbow Road. Then you end it off with a gliding section with lava spouts and a turn to the finish. The music on this track is excellent because the electric guitar is astounding. Bowser's Castle is an amazing track on Mario Kart 8. Okay, I still find Mario Kart 7's Bowser's Castle to be a little bit better, but still.
Flattop Cruise is an amazing track because it's GBA Sky Garden all over again. When you start the race, the first part of the track takes place on a vine produced by a question block. Then you go onto a bunch of clouds which leads to one of Bowser's airships. This reminded me of DS Airship Fortress. Afterwards, you get launched by cannon into a thunderstorm. Awesome! There are also little boost pads that you can go off of that get struck by lightning. Then you glide and turn to the finish line. This track is pretty nostalgic because it contains some parts of Super Mario Galaxy's Gustin Garden Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy's 2's Sky Station Galaxy. Cloud Top Cruise is a really fun, amazing, and nostalgic course. Holy crap, this course is amazing. You are literally racing in the Mushroom Kingdom nightclub. Electrodrum is an amazing track because it's a modern version of 3DS Music Park, and I love that track. On Music Park, you drive on percussion instruments, while on an Electrodrum, you drive on electric type instruments. I still find Music Park to be better. Anyways, on Electrodrum, you are driving through a nightclub owned by Larry Koopa. There is even a part of the track that makes a dun sound. There's also a jumbotron screen with dancing Bowser baddies, which I find cool. Even the music on this track is amazing. It sounds very techno, and I really love it. Overall, Electrodrome is a blast to play on. I apologize for the quality of the gameplay. I tried my best. Wow, this is the only Nitro 3 section track we got from Mario Kart 8? I think Nintendo could do better than that. Oh wait, DLC Pack 2 at Big Blue. Never mind. Anyways, Mount Wario is literally amazing. Normally I hate ice tracks because they're slippery, but on Mount Wario, it's much, much, much better than that. It doesn't feel slippery at all. Moving on, the track has a lot of details. For example, the Olympic sports type stuff like ski slalom and ski jump. You even drive on the side of a dam. Holy crud. This track is just popping out with detail. The music is pretty awesome as well. All in all, Mount Wario is a major blast. And again, I'm sorry for the quality of the gameplay. Yes guys, I am one of them. I just am. I just love this track. Number one on my top 16 Mario Kart 8 Nitro Grand Prix tracks is none other than... Rainbow Road. This track is just so amazing. The space station was an amazing outside-of-the-box idea. The colors of the Rainbow Road are amazing. The graphical overhaul is astounding, and the music is legendary. The track design is a little bit twisty, but with some practice, you can nail the track. I also love the addition of the little blooper spaceship. I thought that was awesome. Nintendo did an amazing job with Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road. Now I've been hearing hate on this track because it has a space station. It's not a rainbow road anymore because it has a stupid space station. Wah. Shut up. Just shut up. This track is amazing, and I think it's the best Mario Kart track in my opinion. That's all the time I have for today. What are your top 16 Mario Kart 8 Nitro tracks? Leave a comment below. Give this video a like if you like my list and to support the series, or dislike if you hate this list and won't give me credit. I would also appreciate it if you subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for more. I am Vincent Weir, signing off. Peace out. Bye.